you're not going to convince somebody to love you because they don't love themselves if they're treating you that way. And you can't force somebody to, to do the work that we're doing right now. You can't force somebody. But you know what you can do? You can do it for yourself. You can always take your own power back. Today we're going to be talking about four ways that you can stand up for yourself. Let's start with the bottom of the deck today. So this is kind of the backstory of what brought us here. Usually when we need to stand up for ourselves and take our power back, usually that comes from something that tries to take our power to begin with, right? I mean, one could argue that this is just battling with our own minds, with our own selves, with our own insecurities, which that can, this episode can be applied to that as well. But let's look at the bottom of the deck here, because these are the cards that I've I pulled. We have the Ten of Cups, the Seven of Swords, and the Lovers. So how I'm seeing this lineup here, this Seven of Swords is the star of the show. This is somebody who tried to take your power away in some shape or form. With the Lovers here, this could be even a choice that you made that you feel took your power away. Like maybe you took a job that's below your pay grade, for example. Maybe you picked um, an outfit that you feel would be more acceptable to not offend people around you. Oh, you should be dressing more modestly. I come from the church, so that's an example for me. Or maybe this is literal. Maybe this is a lover. You know, maybe this is a love interest even that you feel you have to change yourself for, for them to like you. With the lovers, it is a choice. And I feel like with the lovers, especially in the Seven of Swords, this can feel even worse when we feel we made a conscious choice to actually give our power away. Now, with the Ten of Cups and the Seven of Swords, I'm seeing this as... The Ten of Cups can be family, can be your partner, can be your community, your friends, your colleagues, right? This is like a community card. So this is really anybody. The Ten of Cups to me can be anybody, right? With the Seven of Swords, maybe you feel like people have dulled your shine because they don't want you to outshine them, for example, like if this is a family member or... Maybe you feel like somebody literally took something from you. Like maybe, God forbid, some of us have been in abusive situations where somebody actually has ripped our power and our autonomy out of our hands. So that as an introduction, if any of that, if you relate to any of that, then this episode is going to be for you. We're going to look at four ways on how to... Take that power back and stand up for ourselves when we get in these sorts of situations because it's inevitable in life, right? Even if we are totally confident, I literally have the king of wands here as I'm speaking. Even if we are totally confident and people respect us and there's always going to be these situations with the seven of swords, right? No matter what, especially even more so if you are successful because people are going to try to take you down a peg because they're jealous, for example. So, you know, love and light to all, but we all ha we all face different situations in our lives and think of something right now that's making you feel depleted or ma that's making you feel like you don't have as much confidence as you wish that you had. Okay, so let's start with our first card, the Ace of Swords. To me, the Ace of Swords is the ultimate card of taking your power back. This is the card of speaking your truth, of standing up for yourself. And sometimes with the Ace of Swords, if not always, depending, it's going to be sharp. Think of the Swords suit, the King and Queen of Swords. They say what they need to say and they don't mince words. They have strong boundaries. They have respect for themselves, and when they walk into the room and they say their piece, they expect to walk out with a victory, which is the Ace of Swords. This this is the energy of, like, 
a cutthroat lawyer that comes in to defend their client and they walk out victorious, you know, the, at the highest vibration, this is justice, this is truth. Many times when we have to pull out this Ace of Swords energy, there's a reason with the Seven of Swords. The sword suit is just tough to begin with, in my opinion. Maybe it's because I have so much Mercury in my chart. I struggle with my mind. I feel like our own minds can play tricks on us as well. And so when we are speaking our truth, we can even be our own worst enemy instead of being like on our own side. Like, yes, I deserve respect. I deserve for people to respect my boundaries and my time and care about me as well. Equal give and take comes into this as well, like the justice card, right? That's a Libra energy. It's an air sign energy. It's, a, it's an energy of just, it's what's on paper. It's not about being nice or mean. It's just about it is what it is. And this is my truth. And these are what my boundaries are. It doesn't have to be cutthroat unless the situation calls for that. We all have to be the king and queen of swords at one point, right? Unfortunately, depending on the situation, depending on its severity, I mean, if this is a situation where you have spoken your truth multiple times and somebody continues to... Say, say this is an abusive situation. I don't always mean to go there, but I have experience in this and that's where I'm speaking from. That's the place that I'm speaking from. It's like a place of, it took a lot for me personally to get to this Ace of Swords. In the past, I was a people pleaser. In the past, I put myself down, like I was saying with the Seven of Swords, where it's like I gaslit myself in a way that said, well, who am I to have a boundary? Who am I to request this out of another person, even though I've given my last dime and my blood, sweat, and tears to this relationship or whatever? You know, I've been through a lot of shit. <laughs> I've come to this point many times and spirit, he, spirit gives the sword, right? Spirit will say, it's time. And many times in the past, I did not take the opportunity to take the microphone and speak my truth. Instead, I, I cowered away from this energy. And it's taken me many, many, many years to get to the point where I am able to firmly state my boundaries and what's bothering me, right? And that will bring us to our next few points here, but just a little bit more on the Ace of Swords. The Ace of Swords, it doesn't always have to be birthed out of a ne negative situation, we should have the Ace of Swords in our pocket at, at all times, like a credit card in our wallet, right? The Ace of Swords shouldn't just be something that comes out when we're pushed up against a wall with the Seven of Swords. The Ace of Swords, and we're going to talk about this further as we go, the Ace of Swords should be something that we're clear on. What are my boundaries? What are my desires? What is my truth? What, what beliefs do I have? What do I believe is morally correct or morally incorrect? You know, just to be like super formal about it. Like the Ace of Swords is kind of like the justice card, the justice system, right? This is like right from wrong, basic kindergarten stuff. You don't steal your toy from, you don't steal the toy from Johnny, it's just simple, basic things like that. So, but it's not so simple and it's not so basic, right? So this is, to me, it's kind of like a set of beliefs. And we're going to get into that a little bit further about like how to set standards and how to think through all of that. And, but I just want to stay in the Ace of Swords a little longer to say the Ace of Swords, it should just be something that we're very clear on, 
Like this is our sword. This should be our sword that we carry around with us. And if something arises, seven of swords where we have to whip that bad boy out, so be it. But if not, even if it's just a happy, wonderful day, the Ace of Swords is, it's like an honor. It's like the, this is the sword that the knight puts in their sheath, right? Sheath, right? <laughs> Somebody tell me in the comments. This is who we are, the Ace of Swords. And we, if this, I'm sorry, I'm getting so worked up over this because like this is something that I have struggled so badly with, guys. Like I can't even tell you how badly I've struggled with this. If we're not clear, then how in God's name is anybody ever going to treat you how you want to be want to be treated well I just want people to love me and I want people to treat me with respect and I want people to, to to honor my boundaries but if you don't even know what your boundaries are then how are you going to ace of swords when the situation arises well that's that's a good question and that's what I can't had to come to and we're going to get deeper into this all right so that's our first card our second card is dun 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 the Knight of Cups. Speaking of knights, see, this is not the Knight of Swords, though. This is the Knight of Cups. Because our truth with the Ace of Swords should always come from the heart. It should come out of a, a place of true compassion for ourselves and for others. Now, like I said before, there are some situations with the Seven of Swords where if you're dealing with a narcissist, for example... I'm just going to be honest with the Ace of Swords. That's not going to work. Coming at them with the Knight of Cups, coming at them with vulnerability, explaining to them why this matters so much to you, you know, why you care so much about what you're saying and expressing your emotions. The, the Knight of Cups is very vulner like emotionally intelligent and vulnerable in the highest vibration. Unfortunately, if you're dealing with a narcissist, seven of, I almost said seven of pentacles. Yeah, we should, we should stop and think about that and change directions if we're dealing with a narcissist, right? We, we, should, we should all check in on that. I don't care if it's a family member. You know what I'm saying? All right, seven of swords. If somebody is consistently deceptive, gaslighting you like an example of gaslighting would be like me explaining well I have this certain boundary you know um, I need a little more time to myself for example and the person will come back at you and say what do you mean more time all you do is take time you never have time for me you know don't you understand that you're actually the one who's causing all of these problems in our relationship and it's actually your fault that this and this and this happened it's like all I was saying was that I just need like literally like a half an hour a day to myself and it will just help me to become more balanced. This is you explaining it to the other person. They come back at you, gaslight you out of your own emotions that you don't know what you're talking about, that you that you never this and you never that. Unfortunately, you could be the best lawyer in the world. You can't out lawyer a narcissist. Trust me, I've tried. I've tried. You can't out lawyer a narcissist. So let me get back to this. This is this is for normal situations. This is, you know, and if, if you are dealing with something more extreme, like abuse or somebody that you feel like you can't get away from even or that they have you like in a mental trap, please seek help in any way that you can. Even if you need to like stay at a friend's house or something for a couple of days so you can get your thoughts together. Because the thing with narcissists is they get us in this fog and it, it makes you question yourself. It makes you think, well, was I being, and this goes back to the Ace of Swords, was I being too harsh? Was I being cold? Was I not taking their emotions into consideration? I mean, who am I to have boundaries anyway, right? So that's the cycle back around again, so. Let's look at this Knight of Cups a little bit further because he's very important in this equation. When we're first learning to take our power back and stand up for ourselves in all sorts of situations, the best way to present this Ace of Swords, our truth, our boundaries, the things that we believe in, is to do it out of a place of love, 
vulnerability and honesty. And I know that that sounds obvious, right? You know, that's just common advice. But the thing is, is especially when we bring this other trickier stuff into the mix, our minds can play tricks on us, right? And even if you haven't dealt with a narcissist or you haven't dealt with any forms of abuse, like I said, we can gaslight ourselves. We can say to ourselves, well, like, who am I to have this boundary or who am I to want this thing, right? So with the Knight of Cups, the best place to start is with ourselves, right? Like, say a situation happens with the Seven of Swords, right? Like, say, just say anything happens, you know, like maybe you feel like you should be paid more money or something. It's like you, you go home and you think about that with the Ace of Swords. You think about what your truth is regarding that. You know, what are you going to do? Open your heart to your own self. Think about your own self with the Ace of Swords and the Knight of Cups out of a place of love. What do I feel that I deserve? What do I want? Kind of getting in tune with your own emotions, your own thoughts without anybody else interrupting you and saying, oh, you think that you deserve that much an hour? Well, good luck finding a job that pays you that in today's economy, in today's world. Good luck starting that business. You, you don't have any business experience. And I went to business school. It's like, okay, but do you own a business? And well, no, I don't own a business, business, but I went to business school. Okay. You know, it's, it's like those sorts of things. We have to be really clear, Ace of Swords, with ourselves, right? Because like I started off with, a lot of the time we we get to this place of having to stand firm and take our power back and stand up for ourselves when something bad happens. And that's not a bad thing. That's part of like the universal structure of things that helps us learn these universal lessons of self-worth and, and self-power and autonomy and all these things. So a lot of the time things will actually come up as a bump in the road to help us realize things about ourselves and to learn different lessons. So it's kind of like the ecosystem of the universe, it takes care of its own. Everything that happens to us, no matter how negative, is actually, this may be controversial, but for us. Things happen for us, not to us. Okay, so now that that's said, with the Knight of Cups, if we can't be vulnerable with our own selves, like in the quietness just of our own house or apartment or car or at the gym or when we're taking a shower or whatever, if we can't even be honest with ourselves with the Knight of Cups and love ourselves and, and open our hearts to our own selves and get to know our own selves, then how the hell are we going to do that out in the world? Because people are not just going to give you a raise. You know, people are not just going to treat you kindly. Well, why do I keep attracting all of these narcissists? I will say for myself, because I'm not going to comment on anybody else's experience for myself. It's because I had to do this inner work with the Knight of Cups. I had to heal my own heart, open my own heart to myself because I have had so many painful situations in my past with the Seven of Swords that led me to the point of feeling like I didn't even deserve basic kindness from another person, let alone love, right? That comes from abuse, of course. Not everybody has that much of an extreme amount of work to do. But at the same time, place yourself where you need to place yourself. With the Knight of Cups, this is really the first step it to this backtracking to begin with to even figure out what our truth is in order to speak it and in order to stand up for ourselves in order to take our power back how can we take our power back if we don't even see that somebody stole it away from us to begin with see that's another side of this too this might not even be us realizing we need to take our power back because we're so used to living below the standards that we should be living and I'm saying this out of a place of love with the knight of cups because I myself have dealt with this since my earliest memories I've had so many situations that have caused me to to question my own self-worth to the point of where I wanted to unalive myself so I'm saying this out of a place of love and compassion and vulnerability with you that this is not easy. 
this stuff. So go easy on yourself with the Knight of Cups. Don't don't get angry at yourself. Well, why do I keep getting into these negative situations to begin with? Why should I even have to take my power back? I keep doing this. I keep I keep doing this again and again and, and these things keep happening to me and it's my fault. You know. And then the spiral happens and then we don't get anywhere. That's why in order to find our truth to begin with, we got to start with us. Whether you were pushed into the corner to take your power back and to think about all this stuff, it's not really relevant, like whether that was the reason why you got here or whether you were just doing like self-development work or whether you're watching this video or listening to it on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> all right. Let me pull back around here. I think I've said enough about the Knight of Cups because it's, it's all about the intention and the way in which we arrive at this place of power. Because let's be real. It's like a king of wands in the reverse. Right? When somebody is just blasting into a situation. Claiming what they're worth. And, and saying that this asshole is doing all these things. And they need to respect me. It's Those people always are interesting to me. Because... They say a lot and they're very like grandiose, but then when you actually get go a few layers deeper, not always, of course, I'm just saying this is a very particular archetype that I'm mentioning. People who blast into a situation and claim their worth and claim their boundaries and claim their, it's, it's the energy by which they're e expressing that, that I know that it's false. Right? They're saying the things they think they should say. They're blasting into a situation trying to exert control over it. Control versus control, it's not going to do anything. It's just going to cancel each other out. If you try to come at a narcissist with narcissistic tactics, it, they're just going to cancel each other out and the cycle is just going to continue. You know, because I've been there as well where I've, I've quote unquote stood up for myself against the narcissist and said all these things with a loud voice and, and claiming my power back. But at the end of the day, I wasn't claiming anything back. Why? Because I was saying those things as a means of fighting that person and trying to control, manipulate that person to treat me the way I deserve to be treated. If you're dealing with a situation like that, my best advice, leave. You're not going to convince somebody to love you because they don't love themselves if they're treating you that way. And you can't force somebody to, to do the work that we're doing right now. You can't force somebody. But you know what you can do? You can do it for yourself. You can always take your own power back. Don't go and try to exert authority over somebody else and, and claim the things that you need from them. If you state what you want and what you desire and what your boundaries are and people do not respect that, you cannot control somebody or manipulate somebody into doing those things for you. I would, my best advice, walk away. If you've tried multiple times, it's best to remove yourself and protect yourself. Let's go to card number three, the nine of pentacles. This is really one of the most car important cards that we have today because the nine of pentacles, this is us. This woman here, she's standing in her life as if she is the ruler of it. And see how I said as if. She is the ruler of it. But she doesn't even have to claim that because it's an energy. She's acting as if that is true, even if it isn't presently. Even if you're in a tough spot financially, for example. Even if your confidence is in the gutter. If you feel like shit. If you just went through a messy divorce. If your business failed. See... Setting your standards is not something that successful people do. 
people become successful because of their standards. Do you know what I'm saying? If we don't set these standards for ourselves, we will remain in the position that we're currently in that we feel is negative. We all have areas of our lives where we feel this way, where we feel drained and depleted. Let's look at the Knight of Pentacles for a minute and, and think about the themes of this card. She has these pentacles here. And these represent her time, her values, her money, you know, literal, literal possessions, right? This is a card of wealth. This is a card of living a luxurious lifestyle. I mean, this is like a vineyard with a, with a beautiful house in the background that she owns. She's training her falcon here, representing the fact that she has very clear falcon-like focus as well as I see this bird as a guide so she is she's also allowing for the universe to kind of dance with her right we're not alone in this journey in other words even if you are literally homeless under a bridge right now listening to this we are all this nine of pentacles in the eyes of the universe. It's simply a matter of us acting as if we are the people that we already are. But when we have been through challenging things with the seven of swords, things that rock our confidence, things that make us feel like shit, about ourselves, about our lives, that make us question our own self-worth, that make us question if we're, we're ever going to pull out of this financial hole, or make us if are we ever going to find love, you know? Maybe we've come from families that didn't demonstrate a healthy family life, right? So if we start our lives off with challenging things core memories event after event after event eventually that's gonna make us feel like that's the only life that we'll ever know i don't care what situation you're in right now i don't care how bad it is you can and you will make it out but and this is the only but in this entire talk that I have for you today, we have to believe it. And it's not some corny, like, believe in yourself sort of a thing. That stuff never worked for me. It was never powerful enough to penetrate the walls of my mind. I held a truth that I was worthless. I held that truth since some of my earliest childhood memories that... that I just wasn't worth much was one of the main thoughts, beliefs that I've had to overcome. With the nine of pentacles, this is how we override those past experiences. It starts here. It starts with us beginning to see that we can have what she has with the Nine of Pentacles. Not in an envious way. Not in, not in a jealous way. Oh, I wish I could have the life of the Nine of Pentacles. I wish that I could just afford to have a second home like she has. I, you know, I wish I could, I could buy clothes like that that are designer. You know, I, I wish that I could, I could stand so regally. As she does, I wish I could have confidence like she has and do the things that she does, but that's just not me and I'm just never going to have that. Why? How many people started at the bottom and are now extremely successful? And I'm not even talking about like famous people or anything. I'm talking about people in like niches that we don't even know about. Like, there are people all over the world that are multi-multi-millionaires right now with successful businesses and 
beautiful families that are just living their best life. They're buying their second vacation home. They, you know what I'm saying? It's like, the, it, we don't have to be like the next Oprah to be the Nine of Pentacles. We can just be the next whatever your name is. And it doesn't even have to be some like crazy pipe dream either. It can literally just be practical. The Nine of Pentacles is very practical. The Nine of Pentacles She's, I don't want to say she's not a dreamer. She obviously has to be a dreamer to have a dream to get where she's gotten. But she's not the type of person that lives in a fantasy. This is a very tangible card. This is a, an earth energy of I will consistently do something and I will consistently gain something. It's as simple as that. So let's talk a little bit more about her. She's somebody who has very strong boundaries. You know, she's she's somebody that you need to pay to have a meeting with her. You know, I've, I've known people that you literally have to pay thousands of dollars to have a lunch with them. My past mentor, Sandy Krakowski, talked a lot about this. Um, she knows the camping world guy. He's a billionaire. And it was interesting learning under her for a few years because she had all sorts of stories of, of people that she knew. And, you know, she <laughs> she really opened my eyes to what is possible. Because some of the things that I learned from her, I didn't even know existed. Like, I didn't know that it was possible to live a life where somebody would not only honor and respect me and respect my advice and respect the things that I have to offer them, but that it's to the point where, like, it's highly sought after and people will pay for it. I'm just saying that as one of, like, a thousand examples I could make with the Nine of Pentacles. She, and, and, and people want to pay for it. That's what I'm trying to say. It's like, it's not like she's cocky. She's just an expert at whatever she's doing, right? She's, she is gifted and she's not like aloof about it. She's very grateful for what she has. She's a very grounded person. She's kind of living in the 3D world. Like she'll, she'll put her hand on your shoulder when she's talking to you and encourage you and explain her life experiences and how she got to where she has gotten. She's a very kind individual and she knows how to use her time very well with these pentacles here. Like she knows how much to give and how much to keep for herself. She knows that it's important to give because that keeps the circle of abundance coming through. But at the same time, it's just as important for her to retreat back and to take care of herself so that she can continue to be this powerful figure that she is. The Nine of Pentacles has standards and she's clear on those. She has to be. She doesn't have time to, how do I say this spirit? It's like, she has to have kind of this strictness with herself in a way, and this is more of the earth sign, earth energy, practicality of it. Nine of Pentacles, she has a day, you know, planned. She has a morning routine for the most part. You know what I'm, I'm just giving an example here. I'm saying to be a successful person like the Nine of Pentacles, she has a routine. She has certain standards that she set, things like, I need to have my hour every single day that I go to the gym. Or I need to take my time every night when I'm in bed to read so that I continue to fill myself with knowledge so that I can become even greater in the world and so that I can gain wisdom from the people that have come before me or the people that are currently doing what I'm doing now. These are just some examples. Like she has a standard of, the fact that she she does have a busy day. So when she gives her time to somebody, when she has lunch with somebody, when she goes on a date with somebody, she has respect for herself. And if that person doesn't respect the fact that she's a busy woman then or a man or however she identifies, however they identify, then it's not even a rude thing. It doesn't have to be some big dramatic thing. Oh, you're not respecting me, this and that. It's just a very, the, the, the Nine of Pentacles is very self-assured. 
She doesn't have to waste her words with a big speech as to why she's not being respected. She'll take in the information. How is this person treating me? How are they addressing me? She adds those facts up in her head and then she determines, will I see this person again? Did they treat me nicely? Okay, well, I'm going to think about that. She's she's not a dramatic person. She's <laughs> as I'm throwing the card. She's not a dramatic person. She's a very grounded individual that anybody would be lucky to be around her. And that's not a cocky thing. It's just she's a blessing. She's like a walking blessing because not because she's so amazing and she's so great. It's because she's done this inner work. This is for everybody. That's the point of this episode. This is the nine of pentacles is just who we can be as a human being. And this doesn't even have to be money. Money will be a benefit of this energy that she is in. She could be living in a studio apartment, barely paying her rent, but she's in this energy. So eventually, she will get out of that. And what do I mean by this energy? I mean, like take this for example, because this card is also about your environment there's also this snail here that talks about moving through something slowly and methodically, kind of like the Knight of Pentacles. If, if the Knight of Pentacles is not happy with her lifestyle, she will begin to change that energetically and starting from the root and the core within herself. So that goes back to what are my standards with the Ace of Swords and the Knight of Cups? What do I deserve? What are the things I want in my life? You know, how much money do I want to have? Do I want to own a home? Do I want to buy a condo? Do I want to get a new car? It's like, and it's not just about material things. I'm just using that as an example because even if she's dead broke and has like 17 cents in her bank account, if she begins to get into this energy, she will move her way gracefully up into a better situation for herself. A few practical ways that we can do this. I literally just saw that I have like multiple credits available on my Audible, not sponsored by the way. And I was like, oh my gosh, I gotta download some books here. That's something that I literally just thought about this morning because I like to listen to books personally. I feel like it also kind of brainwashes you a little bit better than reading. That's just me. Probably because I, I sometimes I have a hard time reading books because my mind, I have a lot of mercury, guys. I don't know what to tell you. My mind goes all over the place and I have to keep rereading the sentence. So if I'm listening to an audiobook, like say I'm listening to an, an audiobook about about finances or about business or about whatever topic I'm trying to become. Am I trying to become more confident? Let's listen to a book about that. I'm just saying that's how you quote unquote get in the energy in my opinion. Start doing things that are as immersive as possible. Like say for example, like I was saying about my my past business mentor, Sandy Krakowski. I didn't even know some of the things that multimillionaires like, I just... <laughs> I just didn't even understand the sort of lifestyle that could be achieved until I got in there, until I started getting involved with the stock market and seeing like how some of the money system works and, and seeing how these big companies go in and they short stocks and they buy like all these different options and it's like crazy to understand that people are just raking in all this money every single day and it's kind of just normal. See, that's part of it too for me. The way to become something is to demystify it. Like if it starts to become normal to you after you've hung around it a while, then you start to believe by default that you also are part of that group. Like get in a group, for example, like you don't even have to pay for it. Go on like Reddit or something. Like people are always on forums talking about all sorts of things. Like get around people talking about, get used to it in other words. That's what I'm trying to say. Like instead of it being like, oh, wouldn't it be nice to, to have all that money and to do all those things? It's not, wouldn't it be nice? You will have it. It's, it's not something that's out of your reach. Well, I didn't grow up rich or I didn't go to college or I don't have the sort of experience that could get me more money. How am I ever going to get more money? 
we need to get to this card is what I'm trying to say with the nine of pentacles like set standards you're setting a standard by not setting a standard that is a standard your standard is, you know not you but just generally you in the world your standard is that you you haven't gone to college and you believe that there's no possible way that you could ever become a multimillionaire. That's your standard. I'll never become a multimillionaire. You're literally, you are setting the standard. You are your own authority. What you believe will be. Period. Yeah, but it doesn't, I, I'm, I'm believing that I'm rich every day and I say affirmations every day and I'm still in my studio apartment. There's something that's not, and maybe this is controversial, but there's something that's not quite working there. And this is what I mean by that. Affirmations, I love them, right? I listen to affirmations while I'm in the shower and I try to listen to them as much as I can to like brainwash myself. I'm somebody that, I'm a real hard nut to crack with the Ace of Swords. Maybe you're similar. Maybe just saying kind of floofy affirmations don't do it for you. Maybe it doesn't work. Maybe you got to get a little more hands on than that. Like sometimes the, the certain methods that we hear about don't work for everybody, right? And so we got to figure out what works for me. If you buying like an expensive matcha drink every single morning or like kombucha or something, if you go into Whole Foods and you buy a kombucha, and you drink like three of those a week, you spend like, I don't know, 20 bucks on those. You're spending $20 to make yourself feel rich. That, that 20 bucks that you would otherwise have paid for a book of affirmations, you may be better off with the kombucha. I'm just saying, like, do what works for you. Oh, I feel rich drinking this. I feel healthier drinking this. I I feel whatever. And that can get toxic too, like if you're putting shit on your credit cards. I'm not advising that. I'm just saying do what works to crack your own code in your brain to get yourself, get used to this. Set the bar high and then get used to it. <laughs> And that brings me to our fourth and final card for today. It is the Seven of Cups. The Seven of Cups is a card of dreams, of illusions sometimes. It's kind of like a Neptunian energy, kind of like you're kind of between realms. You're For me, I really like the Seven of Cups when it comes to, it's 12, 12 p.m. by the way right now, speaking of, I always think of the Hanged Man when I think of number 12, <laughs> which is Pisces. So anyways, back to the seven of cups. I, I like this card when it comes to like visualization. Psycho cybernetics is a good recommendation that I, I actually first read because of my past bit business mentor, Sandy Krakowski. She started teaching us about visualization and that did begin to change my life because, you know, I'm, I'm a person that's very visual anyways. I, I'm really like, yeah, I'm a visual learner anything that's visual, any sort of art, like I will learn something much better if it's visual. And I do believe that as human beings, the more that we can picture something and imagine something, the more real it will become. You know, that's why people, you know, on the negative side of this, on the delusion side, that's why pathological liars literally start to believe their own lies. That's how powerful we are. And it's not just the brain. I, I don't believe it's just the brain. I also believe there's a spiritual element to this. I do believe I have the magician right here as I'm saying this. And we have a we have an episode all about the magician and manifesting our dreams. But quickly on the magician, I do believe that the manifestation begins at the seven of cups. Like how can we manifest something if we don't even know what the hell we're going for? Oh, I, I just want a better life. Well, what's a better life to you? A better life to one person is, you know, to move out of Puerto Rico and and move to France. For you, that might not be the life that you want. So what is the universe going to do if you don't even know? So the best way to change our lives is to start at the Seven of Cups. The Seven of Cups, we don't want to stay here. We don't want to just stay in a dream realm. 
Because that can, let's, let's take this as an example. This can be like limerence. Like limerence is being infatuated and in love with a person that we don't even know, right? Seven of cups. Or even if it's in a, per, it, can, it can literally be a person that we're in a relationship with and we've been with them for like eight years <laughs> and we're looking at them through this seven of cups. We're like projecting onto that person what we think like what we want them to be. So this is a little bit of a warning in this message about us speaking our boundaries and standing up for ourselves and taking our power back. And this is my one warning of this episode. This is about us. And I, I kind of mentioned this before, but about going in and stating your boundaries all like loud and proud and stuff. This is a personal truth. These are personal boundaries. These are personal rules, right? This is not to project onto other people and what they need to be to us. And if they're not this to us, then we're leaving. And if somebody isn't who you want them to be or is not even somebody who you knew them to be, seven, seven, seven of swords, maybe somebody was a, a liar maybe somebody was a cheater and you were fed a delusion that they loved you that's one example we could be looking at somebody with rose-colored glasses right with the seven of cups we should not use the things i'm i'm talking about today to live in a delusion and to be like oh if i can just believe my partner will become this then they will we can't exert control over another person we can exert control over ourselves, which takes me back to the Nine of Pentacles, right? So, Seven of Cups. When we set our standards with the Nine of Pentacles, speaking of, and we figure out the things that we want, and, and Seven of Cups is part of that process, I would say, because we have to, we have to dream. We have to... Like, in order for this Nine of Pentacles to become what she's become, she originally had some sort of a dream to become something, right? And you can change your mind along the way. You might set out to become a veterinarian, and then you realize, like, hey, like, I thought I wanted to be a veterinarian because I want to help animals. Now that I've, like, been in college and I hate it and shit, I'm going to drop out and I'm just going to start my own, like, animal refuge. My aunt left me this whole farm. I'm just totally making this up. My aunt left me this farm. It's like I could literally take animals onto my farm, start my own nonprofit. I don't need to be a veterinarian. I can do this another way. And I can actually make a bigger impact by starting my nonprofit than I could by being a formal veterinarian with a degree and all this stuff. I can start this today. I can start this now. It's like, so yes, we may start on a journey and then we may pivot off, which is another seven, seven of pentacles would be that card. Like what I, the process I just went through in my mind, seven of pentacles can be you went a certain amount of distance, you you started becoming a veterinarian, you're two years into your degree, and you're like, ah, seven of pentacles, I think I'm going to change directions. Everything I learned was valuable, but I'm going to pivot, right? So part of that comes from the journey. And the nine of pentacles knows that. The nine of pentacles didn't start out with a plan and then that plan went according to plan every single step of the way. The nine of pentacles is a card of understanding as well where to put your time, where to put your energy like we talked about, right? So I will say finally on the seven of cups, once we have gone through these steps of figuring out for ourselves what we want, what our boundaries are, what our standards are, and kind of like even a loose definition of where we want to head, where we want to go. That's where the Seven of Cups comes in in a more spiritual aspect. 
what will happen once we set these standards? I would say it's really, really great to set these standards on a new moon as well, if you want to get real spiritual about it. We just had a, on the date that I'm recording this, we just had a new moon in Sagittarius. Usually on the new moons, I think about the things that I want. You know, I think about the things I want to do. You know, if I were to be more practical about it, like the nine of pentacles, I would call those things goals, right? I want to do this in my business or I, you know, I want to achieve this by the end of 2024, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Very practical. But is it? Seven of cups. Yes, it's practical because I will take certain steps to achieve those things. And that is very nine of pentacles. I'm sure you have goals as well. Oh, I want to lose 20 pounds. Yeah. We can make steps to do those things. Nine of Pentacles, very practical. We've we've been honest with ourselves with the Ace of Swords. Our pants are getting a little too tight here. You know, we want to start. We want to start taking care of ourselves. Knight of Cups. We want to start feeling better, right? You know, making ourselves happier and healthier and and more have more energy and things like this. What's gonna happen? In my opinion, this has happened to me so many times. What's going to happen when we set that standard, especially with a new moon, because it's a really great time to set intentions. Seven of Cups, I believe the universe will come in and begin to test those standards. And I don't mean test like, oh, we're going to test them. Ha ha ha. We're going to test them. It's 1221, by the way. Those are mirrored images. See, this it's, it's like contrast, like the light and the dark, like I have behind me, the white and the black. Esther Hicks talks a lot about contrast, and I love it because what's going to happen when you set a standard, okay, I'm going to lose 20 pounds, sometimes the universe will, will be like, are you sure about that? And I don't mean that in like a negative way. This is for you to make you more solid on the thing that you're already doing. Once you set a standard or a goal, but I like I like how Chris Reck teaches the idea of a standard. And honestly, until this moment, I, I just I just realized I was using that word. And I've taken his dent course and he talks about setting standards. So I, I feel like Chris Reck brainwashed me. <laughs> In a good way. <laughs> but with the Nine of Pentacles, once we set a standard, I would suggest making it as like real as possible. Remember a little bit ago, I talked about like whatever works for you. Like if you drinking kombucha makes you feel like super healthy. I t I'm telling you, that's just an example for me. Like, I don't know why, but when I drink kombucha, I'm like, I'm, I'm super healthy. I don't know why. <laughs> And somebody's going to comment and be like, it's not healthy for all these reasons. And this is, I just want to destroy your dreams and just take every happy moment away from your life and correct you on every single possible thing so that you can't feel an ounce of happiness. Okay, so thank you for all the Karens in the building. Let's give a round of applause for all the Karens, everybody. Thank you all. Okay. Once we set a standard, and I would suggest like writing it out if possible, making it as real as possible, speaking it to the universe, like... I'm somebody who does pray, even though I've deconverted from Christianity, I do still pray to the universe. I pray to my gods, I pray to my angels, I pray to my, I pray to the divine, right? And I will say like, this is, this is what I want. And please give me wisdom on how to get that. And I open myself up to you for whatever needs to change within me or whatever experiences that I need to have in order for me to get to where I'm trying to go. Like say it's a financial goal, for example, because I'm working on that right now. It's like if I have a financial goal in my head or I have a goal for what I want to do by the end of 2024, I will explain that to the universe and then I will believe in my heart that things will be coming my way in order to make that a reality. It is a partnership, in my opinion, right? So even though the Nine of Pentacles is by herself in this card, she's not. 
She has all of these animals surrounding her. She has she has God surrounding her, the divine, right? Everything in the world that works with her. So let me get back to the seven of cups. I was saying all that because when we make these statements, when we state our truth to ourselves, to whoever we pray to or speak to, right? Even if it's just our own selves, once we establish that, the universe seven of cups will begin to give us these experiences with the seven of cups. I'm looking at these today as like doors of opportunity. These seven different doors, these seven different things. You know, it doesn't have to be seven. I'm just saying because the seven of cups, it's like, Say I set a standard that I want to make $100,000 by this date and I'm very serious about it and that is what I have set for myself. I believe that once I've released that to the universe, what's going to begin to happen is certain things are going to begin to unlock in my life. I'm not just saying $100,000 is going to fall in my lap. I'm saying in the energy of the nine of pentacles, I'm ready to go. I believe that the more that I continue to better myself, to research the things that I'm trying to do, certain things will just begin to make connections. Maybe even a video will come up on my YouTube and I'll be like, oh my God, and I click that and that's like the information that I needed. See, this is more of the spooky side of things because I do believe it is a partnership between us and the universe on a personal level, I believe that. Whether you believe that or not, this still applies. It, it could just be if we take all of the like spooky stuff out of it and we just think, okay, I set a standard. And so now those answers are more obvious to me than they were before. Like they stick out to me more because I'm focused on it. Say I'm trying to lose 20 pounds, something practical. It's like now that I have set the goal and I've set like how many calories I'm going to have a day or whatever. And I've set that I'm going to work out four times a week and I got my plan together, nine of pentacles, very practical, have everything set out, ace of swords, it's the, it's my truth, knight of cups, it's healthy for me, it's best for me, it makes me feel good. Now what's going to happen, I'm going to start noticing like, oh my god, there's, there's a weight loss campaign up on that billboard. Oh my god, uh, this girl just came up on my for you page on TikTok talking about how she lost 20 pounds in a year or whatever, like, you know, whatever, you know what I'm saying, it's like, I believe that once we set these standards, seven of cups, things will start to appear in our reality, and this to me is back to more of like the, the spiritual side of things, where the seven of cups is kind of like a translate, like state, it's almost as if when we become very practical on something and set a goal, set a standard, it's like the dream realm will start to blend into this reality to help you make those things happen. That's what I believe. So, and I've seen that happen many, many, many times in my own life. Every single time I set a goal, that happens. But we have to be open to that. We have to release the the expectations to the universe because it might take you a year to lose 20 pounds. You might watch a video where somebody says, lose 20 pounds in two months, but it might take you a year. That should be okay with us. We need to release the need to control how all this stuff happens, okay? So that's, that's when it comes to manifesting and setting goals and setting standards for ourselves. But let me just come full circle with this whole message because this is all about us even though the topic of this episode is about taking our power back and standing up for ourselves yes that is what this episode is about but everything that we just went through is all that back end stuff I would argue that if we take care of all of this, the back end stuff, the nine of pentacles, the stuff that is about us, 
and we work on ourselves and we focus on ourselves and we stay in our own lane and we get we keep our head down and we do our work and we press forward no matter what and we don't let people get to us if we just focus on us all of this other garbage with the seven of swords it will take care of itself. The trash will take out itself because they will not be able to survive in this frequency that you are in. They will shrivel up and die energetically. Spirit will move you out of abusive situations because it's like you have this clear mind now with the Ace of Swords. You know what your value is. You know what you worth, your worth is. You know you deserve more. And you don't even have to say that out loud. You're saying it to yourself and you're saying it to the universe. You will find Seven of Cups that Spirit will set things up for you as you begin to move in a certain direction where every single step that you take is protect you will always be protected you will always be helped and guided to your next destination that's what to me this falcon is all about that she's holding this is like a guide that guides her on her next steps even though it is very practical it also is very spiritual because this is the cups the heart the emotions the spirituality of us all we all have a spirit you know we all we need to be clear on us so that when something happens, we are able to take our power back. And sometimes taking your power back is not saying anything at all. Shh. It's just packing your things and leaving, metaphorically or literally. Sometimes taking your power back and standing up for yourself is all about recognizing your own self-worth and turning inward and figuring your own self out it's not about anybody else it's not about telling people off it's not it's good to have boundaries right so that when something arises where we need to stand up for ourselves where we need to say something where we need to set a boundary where we need to be clear with our boss I can't work Saturdays I have to take care of my grandfather it's like it's it's very clear things like that that we will not will be pushovers in life if we don't do this self-work once we do this self-work we will find as well that this whole seven of swords thing i'm telling you you're just gonna start slipping right out of situations I'm talking from personal experience. The more I focus on myself, and I'm not saying be selfish, she knows how to give and she knows how to receive and she knows how to balance, right? That's the Nine of Pentacles energy. It's a balance, but you've got to get clear with you and you've, you've got to get to a space where with or without somebody, you could literally be alone in the world and you are in this position of authority over your own life. Self-control and knowing thyself is one of the most ancient philosophical and religious notions that is taught from some of the wisest people that have ever existed on this planet. Know thyself. That's what today's episode is about. I love you guys so much. It's been Missy Gordon and the Metamystic here. If these episodes are helping you and you want to help support the show, I would love to have you guys either purchase merch like this beautiful shirt here. I have the black merch up on the website now. I have the shirts and the mugs. You can also donate to help support the channel. I'd love to have you guys um, listen as well on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And um, please leave a five star on my Apple, on Apple Podcasts so that my podcast can get out to more people. I also really like to listen to podcasts personally, so... You know, I do have the YouTube premium, but if you don't and you can't like close the screen, I feel like that would be so annoying. So if you want to listen while you're like working out or something and uh, you want to just listen, you can always listen on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. I love you guys so much. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, share, leave your comments down below. I love to hear from you guys. Until next time.